going? Hey guys, welcome back to another great episode of Sellos Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and in today's episode, we're starting our road trip to Atlanta and doing a in-trip vehicle review of the 2014 Chrysler Town & Country. So stay tuned. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back. As I said, uh, we are going through a in-vehicle review in this episode of the 2014 Chrysler Town & Country on our way to Atlanta. <clears throat> now it's a nine hour trip. We're going through straight roads, curves, hills, and uh, not for certain on mountains. Right off the bat, uh, we know that we need our struts and shocks done on the vehicle. Uh, they are sitting in the garage <clears throat> waiting for me to get that episode done. So definitely stay tuned for that one. Um, geez, struts and shocks. Can you think of anything else, babe? I mean, you're the one driving. We need an oil change. Uh, an oil change. Uh, but what about the ride? Yeah, so, uh, so we already know the vehicle needs a tune-up, <clears throat> but so what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a review halfway through the trip, so about five, six hours in, a review at the end, and uh, I'm going to throw it all in this video for you guys. That way <clears throat> you know what we're starting with, you know what we saw during the trip, so if you and your family takes a trip in your 2014 Chrysler Town & Country or your Chrysler Town & Country around that, uh, that model year, then uh, you would know as well what to expect when you're on the road. Oh, we're also going to do <clears throat> sea foam and compare sea foam on the way home to no sea foam on the way there. Misha had a good idea. Guys, leave it. In the comment section, I uh, actually, man, you guys are gonna see this in the comment section anyways. We're gonna run Seafoam and Octane Booster on the way home and see if we can have a better mileage that trip than the trip down to Atlanta. <clears throat> Same route, everything. It'll just be uh, different with the Octane Booster and the Seafoam. So, pretty much right off the bat, we know that the vehicle needs to tune up, struts and shocks. Uh, we are running Econ Mode. Uh, if you don't know what Econ Mode is, check in the upper right hand corner. I'll throw the link to the video I did on what is Econ Mode and what does it do for your vehicle. All right, uh, so let's go with that right now. Trip starting out good. You can hear Zabian and Darius all acting crazy in the background, and Jayla's back there sleeping as well. Uh, if anyone wonders why aren't our other three children with us, well, <clears throat> they're teenagers. And uh, if you have teenagers, you would know you're not cool anymore. So our oldest uh, is turning 18 in September. He just stayed home, leader of the pack there. So good stuff um, we're gonna check back with you guys in about six hours so we will see you soon actually in just just a second <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. As I said, we are gonna check back in uh, once we're into the actual road trip a little and review the 2014 Chrysler Town & Country and what we see after doing seven hours into a nine hour road trip. So, what is it you see, babe? I mean, you were driving for a minute there as well. I know for a fact we need tires aligned. Yeah, tires alignment most definitely. Guys, remember any time that you mess with your suspension, your your tie rods, you know, uh, if you're switching out your inner and outer tie rods, your alignment needs done. Okay. Uh, so yeah, tires were definitely a thing. We tried saving a buck and going with some off-brand ones, and I think they only last for about 25,000 miles. So probably have to switch those out soon. Also, we wanted to check the inner and outer tie rods on our vehicle uh, due to a lot of steering wheel vibration, uh, but that could also be the brakes. I hate the brakes in the town and country. And that's only because the road trips that we actually take are usually, you know, seven, nine hours, 12 hours, you know, away. And once those brakes actually heat up so much, it starts to vibrate every time that you press the brakes. So a way around that is to do the cross drilled brakes. So that's what we're upgrading this van to, to get rid of that uh, vibration when uh, the brakes are actually applied. And also, it's not just the brake pads, guys. I know what you're thinking. It could just be the brake pads. It's not, though, sadly. You know, it's just a lot of driving, a lot of weight that has to move and stop. So, um... Mostly we're on the mountains that happens. Yeah, mountains, the hills. And, uh... As you can see in the back, we definitely have enough room to fit everyone and uh the luggage as well uh the stow and go space that you have is awesome to actually put some luggage to free up some of the floor space but overall i would say the town and country is doing well on the road trip needs a couple modifications but what doesn't so there you go hey everyone welcome back yeah we made it okay we finally made it we're here in georgia it's like 80 percent humidity outside but we made it so it's all good <clears throat> the town and country actually did pretty well over the trip um we did notice a few things that needed repaired or replaced you know like the struts and shocks uh the tie rods inner and outer um the headlights did great uh, that was a new uh, modification we did with the LED headlights if you didn't see that one I'll throw the link in the upper right hand corner that was actually a lot different <clears throat> it was a, a huge difference on the road from the halogens that came with the vehicle to the new LED uh, headlights so I think those are really nice <clears throat> uh, we did run on fuel economy 23.8 average. Now, uh, <clears throat> remember that's that was no octane booster, no seafoam. Uh, seafoam will help clean out the engine, so we'll be running that on the way back. Uh, we'll run it before we start the trip, and then we'll be. Uh, adding in octane booster which is supposed to give us a, a better fuel economy cleaner burn of the fuel so we'll see <clears throat> um so the fuel economy wasn't too bad the fuel economy rated by chrysler for the town and country is 24. so we're going to see if we can make that a little bit better if so uh, we'll definitely make a video of it so um that is the town and country. Um, AC all went good. Uh, the ride was comfortable the entire time. Uh, the handling, <clears throat> uh, that ties into the, the inner and outer tie rods with that. 
I I do not like the tires that we have on here, which they are. One second. Westlakes. There you go. So I don't like Westlakes. Um, they're cheap. They're a budget tire, which is great, but you give up the quality, uh, you know, of the ride. So road noise is high. Uh, these don't handle very good in, in wet conditions. So if you're looking at saving money, that's your, your best option is Westlake. But know that the ride is going to totally suck. So, um, hand. So that was handling ride condition, the vision, uh, acceleration was, uh, was good. We were running the econ, uh, selection on the center console. If you don't know what econ does, I'll throw the link in the upper right hand corner again for you. Um, but that will definitely help you with your fuel economy. So other than that, great vehicle. <clears throat> Guys, if there's something that is concerning you about your Chrysler Town & Country, dude, leave it in the comment section down below. Let's make a video of it, solve the problem together. And uh, that way you can enjoy the, the vehicle that you and your family have. So thank you so much for watching today. It's always awesome. Uh, Check, you know making content for you guys and you know that's actually beneficial and instead of you having to make a 10 hour road trip with children you know i'll do it for you and uh <laughs> and then tell you uh how to better your town and country so guys if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet now's your time you know uh, I, I post multiple vehicle uh, multiple videos every week about new vehicles uh, new repairs that are needing done. It's an auto DIY channel. It's time for you to start saving yourself money instead of paying these repair shops to fix all your stuff for you. Now, if you want to pay them, hey, cool, do you. But, you know, I'm down here in Georgia to help my wife's sister with the alternator on her 2013 Nissan Pathfinder because the repair shop wanted $1,500. That's $1,500, guys. That's insane. Especially when you can get the alternator for two, 300 bucks. Hell, if you even want to splurge on the alternator, get one of those heavy duty ones, pay 400. It's still not $1,500, okay? Replace it yourself, save $1,100. If you pay $400 for the alternator, that's still $1,100 in your pocket, guys. So definitely check in on that video. It's coming up because I'm doing the repair today. We're getting this thing done. All right. So, hey, thank you so much again, guys. It's always great seeing you. And until next time, hey, keep on wrenching, guys. Take care.